when did you start acting? Like, when did you realize, like, oh, this is my thing, like, I'm in this lane? Um, I started acting at university, actually. Um, I, I actually, funny enough, I grew up shy, and I grew up um, sometimes, sometimes avoiding, like, being, like, in the, in the spotlight. Um, but I loved literature, and I loved, um, I loved storytelling and things like that. So when I got to university, I didn't know I could actually be involved to, to do a degree in acting until I got to university, and I literally uh, saw that I could study drama and graduate with a drama degree. And this was at UCT in Cape Town. Yes. And it literally changed my life. I decided to try it out, and then next thing you know, I actually switched. I didn't switch majors, but I just added it on as an extra major. So, um, and then from then on, since I studied drama, I decided to just stick to it for the rest of my life. <laughs> so that's how I started. I started in, at a university, like when I was 20. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. <laughs> and what have you been... Like, in your acting life, yeah. like, so like, just point out some of the, the moments where you've felt like you've really found your element or you felt as if it started to move. Because, like, I know it's not a constant. You know, people think that success is a constant, but it's not really. It's like you have highs, you have lows, you have in-between. Yeah. So just help us understand the highs, like, the little moments of, ooh, this is a big victory, ooh. Um, okay, the first, like, victory was when I got an agent. Um, this was, like, in 2014, I think, if I'm correct. I, I graduated in 2012, and then I was hustling, and I was still looking for opportunities. And then I happened to get an agent, and she was actually one of the best agents in South Africa. Uh, Munyin Lee, she actually passed away um, recently due to COVID. Um, but I literally owe her the most because she believed in me. I was just like this young Zimbabwean woman um, who had only, like I said, started acting at university, but she took a chance on me and she gave me, um, you know, opportunities through these auditions. So I had a lot of practice. So my first, I think, breaking point was when I got an agent. And then the second part, I think, was three years later was when I finally got into my first TV role. My first, like, official professional television role was on SABC. That was, like, my first. Uh, that was, like, yay! Oh, my goodness. You know? <laughs> now, we're, now we're talking. <laughs> uh, otherwise, before that, my parents were, like, wondering, uh, what are you doing with your life, girl? <laughs> Zim <Little> story. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in you? <laughs> what are you going to start I'm... living? <laughs> Are you wasting our money? <laughs> oh, you already did because you went to school and you don't have a job. <laughs> so that was, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Coco, I mean, I have to touch base because I'm sure like so many people are kind of like, wow, like everyone that's watching is like, yo, you need to check this thing up. Da, 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 da. And I've seen that even with 10, it's kind of like, Reshape the man's career, you know. Like I looked at him, and I'm like, bro, you know what? You you are in your element. I can tell. Yeah. So can you like talk a little bit about Coco and how it came to be and what it was like on set? So, on set, yeah. So Coco was again another high point. I had been acting in a couple of TV shows in South Africa, and I was really hungry to be in a film. I was hungry to be a lead actress in something. So I decided. To, to literally contact Joe. You know Joe, right? You just mentioned him. Of course. And I, I contacted him on Facebook Messenger because I was going to be in Zimbabwe for like a month. And I said to him, Joe, I'm going to be in Zim for a month. Is there anything you're doing? Can I come on set? Can I collaborate? I don't know. Like, I was just literally open to anything. I never worked in Zimbabwe before um, in film, except for that audition that we, I think we met there at the audition. Um, but I'd never actually gotten a job. So... There I was on Facebook Messenger telling him, please, if you have anything, and you know, hook me up. <laughs> or, like, just let me be on set. Lo and behold, he tells me, listen, we are actually looking for a lead actress for a film that we're working on. And I was like, 
Yes, please. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> you, can imagine, you can imagine the shock. You know, like, what? Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm just, you know, like, looking for, like, um, a visit onto a set. Now I'm going to be a, I have an opportunity to be a lead in a film. So we, I followed up on that. And then literally, like, two weeks later, I was in Zimbabwe and we started filming Cook Off. So that's how it happened. It happened really quickly, unexpected. Yeah. And it was literally because... I had been hustling on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> from to you. From to you, honestly. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry yeah, no, no, that's how it happened. Oh, and then being on set was amazing because we had a lot of Zimbabwean legends on set. Like, so we had Jesse Mungoshi from Neria. Um, and for those who don't know Neria, it's, the, it's literally the song that, that Oligam Tukuzi sings, Neria, it's based on that movie that that woman, Jesus Ngo, she acted in. And there was Kuzai Sevenzo, I had Anne Mira who acted in Studio 263. I mean, there was so many, and like you said, there was 10 as well. Acting with 10 was dope. And then there was, um, I mean, there was just like a bunch of even theater people that I, I admired very much who were also on set. So... It was a very great experience, and it was my first feature film. Um, but it was it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Oh man! Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I just sorry, sorry. I feel like a little fan now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk acting. Let's let's go more into the details of acting right now. Yeah, let's talk. What acting. would you say makes a good actor or actress? I think the basic, to be honest, the, the first thing is to be believable. It's like now I'm talking from an audience perspective. If the audience can tell that you're acting, then there's a problem. <laughs> so I, I would say, like, if you really good acting or at least decent acting is when you can follow the story and it's not because, you know, you, you're not distracted by thinking, oh, wait, they're acting. It's almost like you're the acting itself takes you into the person's world, like into the film world, and you're stuck on following these people's lives without, and it's not reminding me that they're acting. So that's the first thing. It has to be believable. Second thing is, I think now it comes to, like, skill and techniques and, like, how you express yourself and how you interpret the character. So whether it's, like, mannerisms or the way you talk or whether it's... um yeah, just like expressions, your facial expressions, your body, and yeah, how you now express the character. I think that's like a second thing that you can tell if this is a really great actor or not. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, and then overall, to be honest, great acting is usually accompanied by a whole lot of things. Now, film is not, film is like a collaborative effort, so you've got the director, you've got the script. Sometimes you find some really great actors acting in really shady scripts, so that doesn't help. <laughs> so it's always great when you when you have a great actor in a great script with a great script with a great director and with a great like crew and 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 stuff. So everything just kind of comes together and it's it's fantastic. I think that's what makes great acting as well. So actors are not in isolation, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So as much as a person can be talented, it all comes down to the collaborative effort, you know? It, it just adds to the to the acting itself. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> wow. Um, the difference between film and theater, because I'm sure you've got, you've got both, like you've experienced both. I don't know yeah. on which scale. At least you know film. Right now you're there. But like theater, are you also... I, I am. Well, I actually studied theatre. So at, at university, I was studying oh. theatre. And that was dope. That was great. So people actually, you know, actors have this thing where they say um, theatre versus film. A lot of purely theatre actors usually look down upon, like, film and television because they think, well, they, they say it's, it's not real acting because... Um, <laughs> Because, you know, a theater is actually harder in some ways yeah. in, the, in the sense that there's no, you know, cut. There's no, like, let's do that again. You don't have retakes in theater. Like, literally, once you're on stage, that's it. You have to know all your lines. You have to perform at your best 
uh, for literally almost like an hour or two hours sometimes. And um, there's no going back once once you stop. So um, that's why I think it, it, require, it requires a lot more discipline and a lot more practice and rehearsal. And so that's why I think people um, in, in the industry usually say, oh, no, theater acting is, is the purest form of acting. Um, and also just literally like how you as an actor present yourself when you're acting on camera, you're acting to the camera, whereas when you're acting in theater, you're acting to an audience, yeah. right? So the audience is right there, it's live, and it's looking at you. Um, whereas whereas in, on, on camera, there's certain now skills and techniques you need because the camera isn't literally a human. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tool. It's an equipment thing. So you have to act towards the camera in certain ways, you, your angle, you have to be aware of where you're standing, you have to follow the light, you know, because now the camera works with the light, um, and, you know, you have to hit the spot, like, they call it hitting the spot, like, let's say the director has told you where to go in a scene um, so they could get a certain angle and stuff like that, you have to remember all of that um, on set while you're acting. You know? So it's just, like, different techniques uh, that differ from theater and, and filming and television. Um, and then sometimes when it's TV, for example, um, when it's TV, you'll find there'll be three cameras in one room, and so you have to act, like, towards different cameras at different moments. It's very interesting. Um, <laughs> but I, I enjoy it a lot. It's, it's, I think the whole thing is just amazing. <laughs> okay, okay. No, 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 no. I'm getting like so much of a feel of like the whole scope of it. Like you know, yeah. like I think people people are very one dimensional in their thinking. Like when you say let's talk acting, I think people don't. Yeah, it's like quite easy to box. But I like the fact that you've broken it down and you've looked into film, you've looked into TV, you've looked yeah. into theater. And I think personally, like when I was in theater, I found theater you had to always like. Like, be quite big with a lot of your expression. Exactly. And you can't do that in film. No. It's like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like everything has to be quite subtle and, like, exactly. yeah, it's quite intimate. But, no, nah, like, what do you enjoy most out of the three? <laughs> That's hard because I enjoy acting, whether it's on stage or TV or film. But what I really want to do right now, to be honest, is film. I, I love film. Um, even watching films is more enjoyable to me than TV, like watching series. I think I like the element of doing something from start to finish <laughs> and just kind of yeah. finishing it off. Um, yeah. And I love film because there's so much that you can do with film. You know, like, for example, I want to do sci-fi movies and action movies. I really, I can't wait. I'm like, I keep speaking it into being. I'm like, I'm going to be in sci-fi movies. And, <laughs> but that's the beauty of, of film, right, is that you, it literally can take you anywhere and you can do anything with it because some of it is actually done in studio or it's done, it can literally be done on a computer. So they do, you know, CGI and stuff. But there's so much variety, I think, and so much you can do. So that's why I love film. And so that's my favorite in terms of especially where I am in my career at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And I think, as, like, what, what we're talking about directing, I think, you know how it is because directors are usually the ones who kind of select who gets onto the team, right? And I think another word we should use there is trust. Like, once, yeah. you've, once you've said, yes, you're the person for this role, it's time for you to also trust that person to execute. Right, you need to then let go. Even like when you talk, even when we're because directors work a lot with cinematographers, right? You need yeah. to trust that the cinematographer knows what they're doing. You've communicated it well, and you're like, okay, this guy's a professional. They're qualified to do what they're doing, so let me just let go. <laughs> you run with it. Let yeah. me trust these people to do what they're here to do. I think that's also something you know directors need to always remember to do. <laughs> And that, but it's, and it's hard, I think, because even as an actor, when somebody tells you to do something, it's like, you also, like, that's what I'm saying, it's sometimes it's hard for you to trust, but 
it has to be, that's what I think, it has to be an open conversation. You know, yeah. when somebody gives you an instruction, you have to be able to, if, you, if you're not understanding it, you have to be able to communicate it and say, I don't get that. It doesn't feel natural. Can you explain or like, you can talk about it a bit more? The, the best um, performances from actors come from places that they know. When the character, when they can relate to the character, it's easier for them to translate it because they're playing a, just a different version of themselves. But whose job is that, hey? Like that's why I think it's the job of the actor to find those spaces of 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 what of connection with the character. It's not the director's no. role to do no. that. I can't. But that's what I'm saying. But that's why I'm saying is the director has to be open when the character you've been already you've auditioned. You're playing the role. You say this feels unnatural. The director has to be able to understand where you're coming from because they picked you for, that, for a certain reason. They feel that you probably embodied the role. So that's what I'm saying. From a good director's perspective, if, if the actor says to me, oh, this doesn't feel right, I have yeah. to go and sit down and say, okay, this is where we had. How come it doesn't feel right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Good actors... They have embodied that role. They know. They, they know. They, they know that. They know the person. They've done the yeah. back. The back work. The research. Yeah. Yeah. They I mean, become the person. And then there's those kinds of roles where you can't relate. Like, let's say I'm like me. I want to do sci-fi, and I'm now acting as some like, you know, avatar from another, you know, <laughs> universe. <laughs> I guess that's when you look for maybe like themes that you can relate to, not necessarily maybe the actual character themselves, but maybe like the theme um, of their journey. Like let's say if it's lost, they've lost someone they love. Uh, mm -hmm. I might not necessarily know what it feels like to lose an uh, alien brother or sister, but I know the basic concept of loss. I understand it. And so I think it's also not just about knowing the character's journey, but being able to understand humanity and like what humans go through in general. I think that's also, and I think that's something that we, I remember being taught at school is that as actors, we need to become people who are constantly aware of the world and humans and the human experience. Like, what does that mean? Even if it's not your experience, but just having that empathy towards someone else's experiences, yeah. you know, that also contributes to your performance, you know. Because it's not always that you're going to get a character who you can, like, just click with and relate to. But having that empathy and that ability to walk in someone's shoes, I think that's, that's a great um, quality it's a to have. Yeah, it's a great, yeah. like, empathy in general in life is an amazing thing In to life. Have. In life, if you can empathize, like, there's so many situations that can be saved. Honestly speaking, like, yeah. you know, even like all you're talking about, like this, this role that you may not know, you actually, you don't realize it, but I know that I, I, I can, I, I know what isolate, I like to isolate myself from, like people feels like, I know what it's like to be picked on, I know what it's like yeah. to be looked at funny. Yeah. If you ask me to play an alien role, I got so much to draw on because <laughs> I, I've been that person. <laughs> You've, been, you've felt like an alien. You've been alienated before. Yeah. You know, I mean, and when you, and that's what I'm saying with directors, the easiest thing is once you have the right team, once you pick the team and the team is there, yeah. you have to be able to let that actor express themselves. Yeah. To trust and, them to do their job. Yeah. Because if, <laughs> yeah, because if they can't question that, and I've seen it happen, trust me, I tried explaining to, I remember I cut this one scene I was doing uh, for one of my music videos, funny enough. And I was trying to explain to this um, lady, like, I was like, yo, I need this from you. And in her head, because I was on set, she was like, oh, you're just trying to have this way with me. And I was like, no, what you don't understand is this is what this needs for the scene to, to speak this way. If you're not feeling it, right, then be present but in that temperament. I was like, I can still work with that, but I can't work with anything that is fake. So if you saying that you're not feeling me, right, at this point, I'd rather you play that way and I can run with that. 
And that's what happened. It's, a, it's, a, it's an authentic emotion you're feeling in that moment. <laughs> it will show. But I can't, I can't say you, at this point, you have to love me. You have to like me. You're not me. feeling me, then don't feel me. Just go with that motion. Go with that. Because I can. It's a real you, thing. You're not facing It's a real me. thing. I get and, that. And, I get that. And what happens is, even from, from that perspective, is I was like, if she gives me that emotion genuine, it makes it even more believable that I am trying to convince her to be with me and to be yeah. in that situation with me, which is still believable. It still tells the story. Yeah. But when you do these things where it's like, oh, he said I should like him, so I'm going to like him. Like what the director said, I should be happy. And you're not happy. It that's when you overact. <laughs> but, but you know what? This is again coming back to the fact that the script has been written. What she needs is a versatile actor. That's why some of the best actors are actors who can literally do stuff in, like, on the spot. Like, if we need you to be happy, you're going to be happy. And that's why sometimes, like, in auditions, they'll be like, okay, try it this way, try it this way, try it that way. They want to see how versatile you are. So, again, as much as that approach also works, but usually you want to be the type of actor who is versatile enough to do whatever is needed for that script or for that moment. You know, yeah, it's I always agree. important to to be the, like no. Yeah. I can definitely agree with you on that one. Like <laughs> versatility in such forms is yeah, it is essential. And I'm glad that like I'm I'm just really happy that we are cutting it up so like openly because yeah. it's, it's like even when I think about it, I guess the one thing that I've been lucky or lucky to do like is to work with a lot of people that are versatile in their think in their art forms but mm -hmm. i've seen a lot more like you get very few of those type of actors that are that versatile like yeah. where it's like crying it's like whoa oh how did you do that like they just pull it out of nowhere you know i'm i'm very i'm, I'm a method actor like i feel like i have to i take i may take a month or even two weeks to get into a role but when i'm in it i'm living it mm. and we can do a whole movie on it, and I'll live that life for that for that moment. Yeah. And then it'll take me maybe two or three weeks to get out of that. Yo, my friends. <laughs> but that's, that's, I found that's what brings out the best in me as a, as a performer. Like, yeah. when I was doing theater, it was like, oh, you go on stage, you enjoy yourself with your crew, you guys look up for each other. It was a blast. Like, I enjoyed it. But as soon as I started to step on, onto screen, I was like, I'm struggling. Because everything felt like it had to be smaller. So it had to be real. And the only way for me to connect with Oh, yeah, it had to be real. It has to be. Because you know, like, the camera, I've always been told, the camera does not lie. Like, it, it can pick up, like, even the smallest little glitch of your eye. The camera, imagine the camera picks that up. And usually, the, you know, I think that's very realistic. A lot of times, again, this is something about acting, an actor needs to understand that humans in general don't want to show their emotions. Like, I don't want to show you that I'm annoyed. I'm always trying to hide. We're always trying to hide how we really feel. I don't want to show you that I love you because I'm scared that, you know, you're going to leave me. I don't want to show you that I'm angry because I'm trying to have self-control. I don't want to show you that I'm hungry because maybe I, I don't know. Like, there's always these things. We're always trying to hide how we really feel. And so... But the camera will pick it up, right? Like, if, just like the smallest glitch of, like, annoyance or, like, anger. Sometimes people, when they're angry, literally it's just their eyes that just, like, a little blink. And the camera can pick that up. That's the beauty about the camera, right? You don't have to overdo anything. It will pick up any slight, like, if you're shy, it will pick up whatever, you know, your face does. Um, it's just, it's, 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 it's I, I love acting, man. It's just, it's just so cool. <laughs> yeah. And that's the so like then, um, Chester said, method acting can be dangerous though. Yes, it can. It engulfs your life. It's a scary place to be in. I don't recommend, like, everybody does it. It's not, it's yeah. not, especially depending on the role, you know, is, like, that's, they think the Joker role killed Heath Ledger. And I can understand it, because if I was given a role like that, it's like, I would push myself, you know to make sure that I get the best performance out there. And, yeah, method acting. To be fair, yeah, I mean, to be fair, apparently his major was already kind of suffering from some kind of depression, so maybe the role kind of made it worse, 
But in general, to be honest, even for you, Jay, like I feel like you need to come up with like techniques that help you to go in and out of character. You always have to have that separation. And it's something that they teach us in acting school as well. Like you have to have that separation of who you are as an actor and who the character is. In fact, when you're acting, you're supposed to be able to see the character as you act. Like you know exactly what the character is about to do. But it's like you've separated them in your in your mind. Because like we're saying, it's dangerous. To, to, to have that blur between reality and, reality. you know, and fantasy or, like, you don't know what's real anymore. And so yeah. you always have to be aware. Um, as if you, can, you can have moments of losing control, almost like you've been possessed, which is fine, but you also have to have a technique. And I'm sure there you can Google or, like, read acting books. Um, you don't have to go to acting school, but you can read acting books that can, like, give you, like, tips on how to move in and out of character. So that is safe. Like, you do, I personally, as an actor, wouldn't want to encourage people to act and then they destroy their lives because they can't, they don't know what's real anymore oh, and what's, what's not. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, 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 it's something that we all need to learn to, like, it's like a superpower, right? If it's not controlled, it can become dangerous. So, so even your own, like, strengths need to be controlled. Like, so that whole thing of, you know, you being able to, like, literally let go, that's fantastic. But it should still remain a healthy space in your life. Like, we don't want you to be, like, to end up committing suicide or something. Like, that's just, like, I don't want that thing. Like, you know? <laughs> no, no, it's true. Like, I get it. I totally get it. I hundred and ten percent I agree with you. hundred and ten. <laughs> yeah, like it's it it it's I don't know. I I'm too I'm too passionate about these things sometimes, and I think about it. I'm like, no, just read it in, bro. Read it in. Like life isn't is it's not that's not real. Like read it in. And I guess having a family has helped, you know, as well. Like being a, a dad and looking yeah, like. <laughs> like I think it, it 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 helps calm a lot of a lot of those type of nerves, you know. But in general, <laughs> like that's where my passion is, and I'm proud of you. Like, oh, you know, thank you. like hats off to you, big ups, well done. Keep on hustling, keep yep. on grinding. I will keep on keeping on. And before we go, please get like, do you have any acting books that you could recommend to people that are? Watching? I actually do. Um, there's uh, I actually wrote a list for an article that I was writing for an interview. But there's uh, Yuta Hagen. She has a, a book called Respect for Acting. Um, there's um, Sinfield, Stanford Sinfield, I think that's his name. Um, he's got a book called On Acting. Uh, no, it's Meisner, sorry. Stanford Meisner. Okay. Uh, it's a book called On Acting. And then there's uh, Stella Adler. Uh, she's also got a book on acting. But these are like the... Considered the top three like theater practitioners who had like those theories around acting and like what acting is about and like getting into character and like in, in and out of character like I was talking about and they're really really good. They even have videos on YouTube. So if anyone's interested in checking out those videos, uh, Stella Adler, Yuta Hagen, and uh, Sanford Meisner, those three, and I will text them to you. Uh, on on Instagram, <laughs> on on your inbox. Uh, but like it's it's just yeah, it's brilliant. There's a lot of uh, stuff out there that people can can read. 